This is an interesting episode because it is number 20 of this podcast adventure. And I would never expect that we would reach what could be almost the end of the second season of GLC Live. So I want to celebrate in a way this episode by talking about something that is very uh, important for me and that can eventually help you all to try to shift the mindset from a, a classical mindset for creativity and uh, creative problem solving which is so much needed in these days. My name is Gianluca Cinque Palmi, you're listening to GLC Live, my podcast dedicated to business design. I'm an educator, design entrepreneur and best-selling author. This show is dedicated to designers, creatives and entrepreneurs that, like me, want to inspire, challenge and disrupt the business and design industry. As we begin this episode, I want to focus our attention on the way we think, what is our current mindset and how we can change our mindset to be more creative and also to practice our ability to problem solve and especially when we are faced with complex problems and complex problem solving. What is our uh, classical mindset? How do we think normally? We can define our natural way of thinking as a reasoning by analogy way of thinking. This is our natural way of learning and this is how we approach every kind of problem, whether we are learning a new skill or whether we are f uh, focusing or, or concentrating on, on different uh, topics. Reasoning by analogy means that Pretty much we are doing what other people do with slide modification. This is what I called a chimp mindset. <laughs> I call it chimp mindset because there is an old saying that is, you see, monkey see, monkey do. So this is our natural way of learning. We copy, we, we observe, we observe our parents, we are, observe our relatives, we observe our friends, and we try to copy and by copying their attitude and, and activities, we can learn. We can learn new skill, we can learn new languages, we can learn pretty much anything. There is nothing intrinsically wrong with this mindset or this mode of thinking. This is our natural mode of thinking, as we said. And this mindset, although is, is natural to us, doesn't necessarily help us when we are addressing complex problems or when we have to think more creatively. When it comes to problem solving or creative thinking, we have to shift. We have to shift mindset. We have to shift gear. And we have to think in a different way. We have to think, as I called, with our philosopher mind, our inquisitive mind. We have to research for new knowledge. This is interesting because we can ask ourselves, okay, so if this mode of thinking is so important, why... Uh, we aren't thinking this way all the time. Well, there are two main reasons why we don't think all the time this way. First of all, this mode of thinking is harder. It's much more complex. It's, it's something that comes unnatural to us, is unconventional. And secondly, because we all suffer from a bias. We call it cognitive, well, we <laughs> psychologists call it cognitive bias. The cognitive bias states that I'm right because I believe I am. Meaning that we all accept and we all favor our mode of thinking 
because it, it taps into our previous experiences and, and taps into our knowledge. So how can we represent this? How can we show, how can we think about this? So imagine on, on the right side, we have a, a circle. And in this circle, we have what we call our beliefs, no? our knowledge. And on the right, we have, so on the right, sorry, we have our beliefs, our knowledge. And on the left, we have the facts, the obje objective facts, the, the <laughs> we can say the, the overall knowledge. And when we look at this sovraposition, of course, it's impossible to have a complete sovraposition of these two spaces, we can say. But there is a small portion, the small portion that intersects between our own beliefs and the objective facts is what we see. That's our cognitive bias. So we tend to, to favor, we tend to see only within this small spectrum of ideas. Now, the, there, is a, there is a catch on this. The more knowledgeable we are, the more vast is our knowledge, the more in-depth is our knowledge on a subject matter, the greater is our cognitive bias. So the more knowledgeable we are, the more bias we have. What does it mean? It means that the greater our knowledge, the more we favor only what we know. The more we favor our own solution, our known solution. And probably because this solution has been ingrained in our way of thinking. Uh, and this is not a bad thing per se. It becomes detrimental when, because of convenience, because of effort, or because, you know, that content is available, is in our mind already, we tend to reject all the other ideas, all the other uh, knowledge that we don't believe is part of our own knowledge. And so we suffer from this cognitive bias. This is why so many leaders in, in any field, in countries, in, the, in institutions, in businesses, struggle to embrace unconventional thinking. We can also say that if we look at the design field and, and every consultant or, or designer experience this, that sometimes your client reject your idea. Yes, sometimes maybe your ideas are not, are not great, but mostly is because probably your ideas or our ideas are not within the knowledge of the people that we are talking to. Therefore, their, their instinct, their natural instinct, their biases, their preconception is to reject new ideas for, for convenience, because they say, I, I know something, I am very comfortable within my space, the things that I know, why should I struggle to go beyond uh, <laughs> my own knowledge? When we want to embark in, in this process of creative thinking or complex problem solving, we must break the boundaries of our own knowledge. We need to start looking away from our own knowledge. We need to explore the unknown, we can say. So here is where we can find alternative ways to conduct business, different communications. We might explore untapped market. And this is extremely important, being aware of our own limitations. So the first part is realizing and saying, oh, wow, maybe here I'm suffering from a cognitive bias. It's fundamental, it's essential for us to, to become better creatives, better designers, better entrepreneurs, because we need to explore away from, from this boundary of our own knowledge. And uh, I have a quote in my book, Business Beyond Design, where I say, only when we are there at the edge of our own knowledge, only there we will find true creative expression. So 
let's start thinking how can we practice this? How can we shift our mindset? How can we move from our chimp mindset to our philosopher mindset? This mode of thinking was perfectly described by Aristotle. And basically, Aristotle says everything, every concept, every subject can be divided into categories and subcategories. The smallest subcategories of all is what we define as first principle. The first principle is the fundamental building block of an idea. They are the most indivisible parts of what we know to be true. Not what we think is true, but what we know is true. Let's look at a simple example. We all had good pizzas and we all had bad pizzas. I always use this example with my students because food is something that we can all relate to so allow me uh, to to do this simple example so what makes a good pizza it's a simple question the answer the natural answer the analogy answer that would the answer that everybody gives is is, is always the same it's it's the ingredients it's the location, it's the technique, and pretty much that's it. That's pretty much that's what we, what we give uh, as an answer. So we can all say, oh, you know, you just need the good ingredients and you can make a good pizza. But pizza is a very simple product. You know, it's water, yeast, flour, cheese, tomato. That's it. So how how is it possible that there is so much uh, difference in, in the quality of this kind of product? Well, when we answer our question in such a, a superficial way, we are lacking nuanced understanding of a subject matter. So we can train our mind, we can train ourselves to perform some analysis and try to dig a little bit de- deeper in the subject matter. We want to have this, we want to acquire this nuanced understanding of a subject matter. We are trying to go down to the most fundamental truth of this subject matter. Not what we think is true, what we know is true, what we can tangibly touch. So in this example of the pizza, how can we do it? One technique that has been used for uh, hundreds of years now is called the five whys. The five whys is a iterative interrogative technique. So we are asking at least five times, but not necessarily only five. We can go as much as we, as deep as we want, as soon as we reach the, what we call the root cause of a problem. Let's apply this small example on our pizza example. So we begin. Uh, Why the pizza is good or is delicious, we can say. Because it's light, crunchy, and flavorful. Okay? So why is that? Why is the pizza light and crunchy? Well, because it's been cooked for the right amount of time and at the right temperature and is light because the dough has been proven for a long time. Okay, so we start seeing that there are two elements that are fundamental, time and heat. And then we can ask once again, why is the pizza so flavorful? Well, the pizza is flavorful because it has a perfectly balanced flavor profile. Okay, why the pizza has a perfectly balanced flavor profile? Because each ingredient covers a different basic taste, sweetness, sourness, bitterness, saltiness, and all together they create a new kind of palate. So why each ingredient stimulates the palate positively, we can ask. And the taste, and we can answer because the taste receptors typically respond to glutamate, which is uh, one of these receptors. And so we can say that the crust is salty, the tomato is acid, the cheese is fat, 
So it has the sweetness. And the combination of all these ingredients creates a feeling in our mouth, a palate that is called umami, which is savory, basically, you know, and that is perceived as a flavorful and delicious uh, taste. When we reach this bottom line, <laughs> this, this essential truth, we are drawing conclusions. So we can say, okay, so it's not only, it's not the ingredients is the fact that we have a flavor profile that is given by these ingredients and this flavor profile is combined by salt, fat, acid, heat and time. This is what creates the magic. So the fundamentals the principle, the first principles of cooking in general are fat, acid, salt, time and heat. And the combination of this fundamental elements creates something unique. This is why great chefs, they can combine all of these great flavors and these great techniques to create something unique, an experience and, and something really astonishing. So is our ability to understand the fundamental truth of a subject is directly correlated with our ability to think critically and creatively. Once we reach that level of knowledge, once we reach that nuanced understanding of a subject matter, then we can recombine, rearrange, and combine in unique, unexpected ways. This is my definition of creativity. Creativity is our ability to combine knowledge in unique and unexpected ways, we can shift our mindset to do what other people are doing and with slight modification to think as a philosopher or first principle. We move from having a superficial knowledge of a subject matter to having a nuanced understanding of the subject matter. This is how we become more creative. And if we constantly practice our analytical and critical thinking to solve complex problems, we become more accustomed with this process. So what happens is that it, it took me a long time to make this mode of thinking second nature to me. But with effort and with practice, we can all do it. And... This will allow us to become a better entrepreneur, a better designer, a better leader, because we try to understand the nuanced understanding of a subject matter. Of course, we cannot apply the first principle thinking all the time. This would be inefficient and exhausting. But when we have to find new solution, when we have to challenge the status quo, when we have to shift our mindset, this is a one practice that we can have. And I hope that you can agree with me that the first step is to realize that we do have different modes of thinking and we need to understand, oh, now I'm thinking this way. I'm trying to just copy what other people are doing because I'm hearing that everybody's doing the same thing. And, and how can I shift that and I say, okay, I'm, I'm, I need to push myself. I need to push my boundaries a little bit further. So I hope you enjoyed this small episode. As always, I'm Gianluca Cinque Palmi. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe and comment on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. This podcast is also available as a videocast on YouTube for references and links. And if you want to receive a free template of the five whys, subscribe and comment on glc.live. I'll see you soon.